So now in this video we're going to look at the op amp comparator again. So I've recently done uh, videos on this, but that was with 5 volts. We're going to bump up the voltage to uh, 12 volts up to about 15 volts right there because that's the voltage range you can expect with lithium iron phosphate batteries, uh, LIFEPO4 or LFP or uh, three ways to refer to them um, that are uh, 12 volts. They're actually 12 volts when they're basically completely discharged. You can go a little bit lower than that, but you might as well stop at 12 volts. And then when you apply a charger, you can get up to 14.6 uh, volts with the chargers. And then when you uh, remove the charger, it's going to go right to about 13.6. That's fully charged. But uh, given at a higher voltage than its fully charged voltage, um, packs some more uh, stored energy into it. So in any case, um, we still have... A uh, voltage divider here that gives you half of the supply voltage so even though uh, we're using 12 volts or higher instead of 5 volts and we have a voltage that's going to change because we are using a 12 volt battery it doesn't uh, really matter um, how the resistance changes here the circuits gonna work the same because that uh, our reference voltage is going to shift as the supply voltage changes which also shifts with the uh, trim pot here so anything that's being used as a sensor I'm just adjusting this manually right now but we're less than halfway when it comes to the uh, output voltage um, for the uh, trim pot the input the plus input is just looking at it uh, but when it was lower we had a low output now we have a high output so you can see that we have the LED to the negative supply. That's the cathode, the short lead, that always has to be more negative. Long lead, the anode, uh, more positive. Going to a 1.5K resistor because uh, we're using a fair amount of electricity right here. We need a, uh, you know, uh, not terribly high, but a somewhat high value resistor compared to uh, 12 volts. And then we got 3000 ohm resistor right there. You can see when the blue LED lights up, since that comes from positive, again, make sure long lead anode more positive, short lead uh, cathode. Um, it lights up when the output is uh, connected to ground. So you should be able to see that. I will turn this down and we have that uh, right there. So I'm using 10K resistors, two of them. So there's 20,000 ohms total for this uh, voltage divider. It's fixed though. We got half and then half. Whereas the trim pot, it's 10,000 ohms of resistance going to a positive to negative. And if I get right to the halfway point, then we basically have uh, 5,000 ohms because it's 10,000. Actually, these aren't uh, as accurate as a fixed value resistors. Maybe it's like 20% off. Um, but in any case, probably a little bit higher than 10K, I'm guessing. Um, but we'll just say it's 10K, a perfect 10K. So right now, um, we're probably just slightly... Uh, less than 10k to the positive, I mean 5k to the positive, and a little more than 5k to the negative, right there, making it closer to the positive supply voltage. And then when the blue LED lights up, we're probably just a little bit below uh, 5k to the negative there, and a little bit above 5k to the positive there. When it comes to voltage dividers, it doesn't matter what their exact voltage is, it's the percentage from positive to negative when it comes to where those resistances come together and uh, so this is a single resistive element but you have a wiper that taps uh, touches you know along the resistive element it's not like uh, fixed value resistors there you can slide it up and down so you go up there's less resistance to the positive voltage goes up compared to negative you go down there's less resistance towards the negative than the positive so you get a lower uh, voltage of course it's not good at providing current so that's why you use op amps um, you could use transistors and stuff too they don't work as well um, when it comes to picking up the exact voltage the op amp is a comparator it's always looking at the voltage from the plus versus the minus and that determines the output so this is not inverting that's inverting and uh, the output goes up and down depending on whether the plus is a higher or lower voltage than the minus so if we have a higher voltage here the output goes up compared to uh, the non -in or the inverting and uh, when the non inverting is lower than the inverting the voltage goes down right now it goes to its maximums because there's no like feedback 
to ever equalize the voltages. If this one's higher, it's always going to be higher than that one because there's no feedback. And so we'll have a high output. Um, but it does go through some transistors so we don't get the full supply voltage. Also, it cannot provide, you know, a ton of current. That kind of throws it off too. Um, when we get lower here, then we have a connection to ground and the blue LED lights up. Uh, without a load, it does connect to ground um, really well. You get zero volts. But even with... Uh, this you know pretty light load right there from earlier videos using five volts I got you know uh, I think it was about a volt and a half off or so it fell you know it was like uh, either one volt at the output or one and a half but if we don't have a load then it will drop down to zero volt hopefully that makes sense here is the uh, pin layout uh, for those just looking at op amps uh, for this uh, first time. So LM358 has two op amps. That means it's a dual op amp right there. You have to power it. Positive supply top right and a negative supply top left. We're not using this one on the right here. And uh, so pretty sure the best thing to do uh, if you are going to make this a permanent circuit is uh, connect the plus to ground and then the negative to the output. That'll make it a voltage follower where it holds the output to ground. Otherwise, we got like stray signals and stuff that can make it go haywire. Um, but uh, I never have problems uh, just leaving it floating either. So uh, other integrated circuits, I do run into that problem. So again, I uh, covered this component uh, quite a bit uh, with 5 volts. Things don't really change uh, that much with a higher voltage. We could go up to 32 volts with a single supply and uh, it, with the dual supply the numbers are in half. That's because uh, ground isn't actually the negative uh, voltage. We could have like 12 volts positive, 12 volts negative, and then ground would be a halfway point. I'm just kind of using this as a halfway point there. And uh, so you could go up uh, 12 volts in relationship to ground or down 12 volts in relationship to ground. Either way, you're working with a total of 12 plus 12 volts for 24 volts. So that's why it's in half right there, whatever this is. Um, if uh, the ground has a negative voltage as well, it just moves like halfway. They should be equal voltages. Uh, but you have, you know, in this case, a plus minus 16 volts is the same as 32 volts, just uh, where the current is sinking and sourcing to. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and uh, of course, when the output is high, the output is considered sourcing the current. And when it is low, it's considered sinking the current. Now, uh, we're working with 12 volts. 10 kilo ohm resistors are uh, perfectly fine at 12 or 15 volts. Even a 1,000 ohm resistor should do okay at 12 volts. Uh, 1,000 ohm resistor, probably not so good at 15 volts though. So... I'm sure that's why I uh, gave the red LED a 1.5K resistor. We're not getting as much current as we want, maybe. Um, but, uh, you know, it's uh, still lighting the LED pretty good and keeping the resistor safe from burning out, um, along with everything else. And uh, so we got the blue LED. They're quite a bit brighter, so I can go pretty high in uh, resistance. At 12 volts, I'd be fine with a 1 kilo ohm resistor. But we don't really need uh, much current, so uh, we go 13 uh, kilo ohms right there, 3,000 ohms. And uh, so one kilo ohm probably isn't good for a 14 point, uh, you know, 15 volts. Uh, we could use a 1.5K, but uh, blue LEDs are brighter, plus it connects to ground better. So um, I don't know if I showed, I don't think I showed the uh, voltage. So we have, uh, the LEDs will get a little bit brighter if we go up in voltage. Uh, but otherwise the circuit works the same so since uh, we got fixed value resistors there the uh, reference voltage i'm going to go right to about where this uh, uh flips back and forth right there i can like wiggle it back and forth so this will be let's go down a little bit i don't know why but we'll go up to 15 volts right there and uh, we'll see that uh it's still that same as x spot so blue led means i just got to go up a spec for like the red and uh, there you go so shouldn't have really moved at all although these may not be you know perfectly equal or whatnot so it may have shifted like slightly but for the most part our point right here is uh, the same 
where it will flip, whether it's 15 or 12. And I realize electronics are uh, never perfect. Um, you know, you might get like slight drift and stuff where somebody says it will be in the exact same spot. But, uh, you know, I think that may have happened here. But that may have been the same spot too. I just couldn't tell. Uh, but in any case, no big deal. I hope uh, that makes sense. And uh, there's the uh, schematic in. So, uh, going to end it there. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen. And check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.